Hello students. So in today's session we shall discuss the reaction with the bleaching powder alcohols continuation topic. So in this bleaching powder when the mixture of ethyl alcohol and bleaching powder is heated final formation is chloroform. But in examination they don't ask only the chloroform they may ask any of these products. So we must and should learn how the ethyl alcohol is going to be converted into the different forms when it is subjected with the bleaching powder. And uh, in your uh, uh, NCR textbook, uh, some areas they are giving bleaching powder formula as the CaOCl2 taken twice, like this. I'll write here CaOCl taken twice, which is wrong. This is the correct one CaOCl2. So here, ethyl alcohol, when react with the bleaching powder, it gives aldehyde means alcohol is oxidized to the aldehyde. So this is called the oxidation step. Next, the same aldehyde subject with the bleaching powder again. Now all these alpha hydrogens are replaced by the chlorine of the bleaching powder and giving CCl3CHO which is called the chloral or else trichloroestaldehyde. This process is called the chlorination. This chloral again react with the calcium hydroxide now giving the chloroform this step is called the hydrolysis so ethyl alcohol to chloroform three steps are there oxidation first step chlorination second step hydrolysis third step and the first step product is aldehyde second step product is chloral third step product is chloroform so this sequence you have to remember now let us see how to uh, identify or distinguish the type of alcohols present in a given sample that is primary alcohol or secondary alcohol or tertiary alcohol. This test previously we have discussed. Let us revise once again. Leucose test. We know that leucose reagent it is an equimolar mixture of the anhydrous ZnCl2 plus a concentrated HCl hydrochloric acid. So when this leucose reagent means this combination he is added to the tertiary alcohol if a precipitate is formed immediately it is called the tertiary alcohol and if a precipitate is formed after five minutes such type of the alcohols is called a secondary alcohol and no ppt is formed at all such uh, alcohols are called the primary alcohols but a primary alcohols also gives the ppt when uh, this combination leucose reagent and a primary alcohol is heated to the high temperature then primary alcohol react with the leucose reagent otherwise it don't give the precipitate so in this way we can easily identify the type of the alcohols whether primary secondary or tertiary but here some people may get the confusion whether ppt is uh, because ppt slowly forms in the case of the secondary alcohol and the tertiary alcohols immediately will be formed but whenever they see when people start forming, they may think that they may are the tertiary alcohols or secondary alcohols. So to avoid this confusion, we are going to the another test that is called the dichromate test. So in this dichromate test, reagent is sodium dichromate. Here you don't need to use the sodium dichromate, you can take the potassium dichromate also. Whether potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate, color is orange color because the color of the dichromate do not depend on the sodium or potassium ions but depend on the Cr2O7-2 where chromium oxidation state is plus 6 plus dilute H2SO4. So this combination is usually called the H plus K2Cr2O7 or H plus Na2Cr2O7. Then how to identify means color change. When this orange colored sodium dichromate is subject to the sulfuric acid it turns to the uh, chromic sulfate which is a green color because uh, Cr plus 6 is a orange colored ion and the Cr plus, plus 3 is a green colored ion. So orange colored substance finally be converted to the green color and this is actually uh, in this particular process oxygen is released. Nascent oxygen is released. So this oxygen is actually helpful for the oxidation process. Okay. Now let us see type of the reaction. When you take a primary alcohol and subject with the sodium dichromate in the presence of the acid where oxygen is liberated, primary alcohol is oxidized to the aldehyde. 
and the number of carbon atoms in the aldehyde and alcohol are same. You can see here R, R same, one carbon atom, one carbon atom. No change in the number of carbon atoms. Since uh, sodium dichromate reacted with the alcohol, here the color of the solution will be changed to the green color the moment aldehyde is formed. And this aldehyde, again when subject with the sodium or potassium dichromate in the presence of the acid, it will be converted to the carboxylic acid. Because this reaction we have studied in the oxidation of the alcohols, sodium or potassium dichromate with H plus ion is a strong oxidizing agent which oxidizes the alcohols, primary alcohols directly to the carboxylic acid. But in this process, there will be no change in the number of carbon atoms of the products and reactants. They will maintain the same number of carbon atoms. So here one carbon atom, here one carbon atom, here one carbon atom, no change in the number of carbon atoms. Such type of the alcohols are called the primary alcohols. Now let us take the another type of the alcohol that is secondary alcohol. When it is subject with the same sodium dichromate in the presence of the acid, it will be oxidized to the ketone. Since it reacted with this one, so again there will be change in the color. But again this ketone generally do not react with the sodium or potassium dichromate in the presence of the acid under normal conditions. But if you use the highest possible temperatures means a drastic condition. So under drastic conditions there will be a breakage of the one bond. Carbon carbon bond cleavage will happen. So that the CO part will be converted to the carboxylic acid and this carbon carbon bonded to the CO part also will be converted to the carboxylic acid. Means here when secondary alcohol is can oxidize to the ketone, there will be no change in the number of carbon atoms. When uh, ketone is oxidized to the carboxylic acid under the drastic conditions, then carboxylic acids are formed. But the number of carbon atoms in the carboxylic acid are less than the number of carbon atoms in the ketone. So in the second step, there will be a change in the number of carbon atoms, but not in the first step. So this reaction. Uh, suggest that secondary alcohols means in the case of the secondary alcohols only number of carbon atoms will be changed in the second step. Let's come to the tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols so they do not react with the sodium or potassium dichromate so that there will be no change in the color. So again uh, if you have still any doubt let's go for the another important and easy test that is Victor Mayer's test. Actually in the Victor Mayer's test the important thing is many times it has been asked that sequence of reagent they are asking means uh, first we subject the alcohol with the phosphorus iodine or hydroidic acid second step we subject that product obtained in the first step with the HNO2 third reagent is HNO2 HNO2 is an in situ reagent in situ SITU in situ reagent means it is generated in that situation during the course of the reaction because HNO2 is unstable so that that we, we should not prepare before the reaction so that we do not we should not add HNO2 but we add NaNO2 and HCl or H2SO4 this react with each other in reaction mixture itself and they provide the HNO2 and later NaOH so these are the four reagents and in the same sequence we have to add we should not change the sequence so sequence must and should be maintained. Now let us take an alcohol. Imagine this is the primary alcohol. React with the phosphorus iodine or H iodine. So that uh, OH group will be replaced by the iodine. So that we get the alkyl halide. This alkyl halide subject with the HNO2 gives the nitroalkane. This nitroalkane when subject with the HNO2. So from here onwards the step, crucial step begins. Here two hydrogens are there. Here one oxygen is there. So these two hydrogens and this oxygen will be eliminated as water here. So since nitrogen lost double bonded oxygen, so it has to form two bonds. Carbon lost two hydrogen, so that it has to form two bonds. So that that nitrogen along with OH will come and connect to the carbon with a double bond. So double bond NOH already an O2 group is there. This we are not changing. Now here whatever the H hydrogen is there, this is an acidic proton. Why? Because here OH group is connected to the double bonded nitrogen so that this may participate in the tautomerism. So H plus N may be released. So that is the reason why this is called the acidic proton. So the name of this molecule is nitrolic acid. 
we are calling this one as an acid why because it can release the h plus n so this nitrolic acid when subject with the base base react with the acid means this h plus n react with the oh minus n and shall be removed as the h2o and na plus comes and sits on the oxygen position oxygen with oxygen so that we get the sodium nitrolate this is a blood red color substance so primary alcohols during the sequence of reactions at the end they give the blood red color substance it is a confirmation of the primary alcohol now let us see secondary alcohols secondary alcohol same oh will be replaced by the iodine so that alkyl iodide iodine will be replaced by the no2 so that nitroalkane but in this crucial step here this is not having the two hydrogens like in the primary alcohol only one hydrogen is there but in this step we need to remove the water molecule to introduce HNO2 over to the carbon of the hydroxy bearing carbonate earlier hydroxy bearing carbonate so that is the reason why we remove this OH along with this hydrogen so since OH group is lost only nitrogen will be connected to the, this carbon atom through single bond so that N double bond will be formed here hydrogen is not there but this structure is, looks like similar to this nitrolic acid hence we call it a pseudo nitrol pseudo means false false nitrol since hydrogen is not there NaOH do not react with this one hence we get the blue color the uh, substance um, pseudo nitrol color itself is a blue color you no need to add NaOH its color itself is a blue color substance okay now tertiary alcohol Tertiary alcohol, first two, three, uh, first two reactions are same. OH group will be replaced by the iodine. Iodine will be replaced by the NO2. So that nitroalkane we got. But here no hydrogen is present on this carbon to react with HNO2. So that no reaction happens. Afterwards, if you add NaOH also, no color change will be observed. So in, in this way, we can easily observe that this is a tertiary alcohol. Means primary alcohols in the sequence of this reagent giving the blood red color substance secondary alcohol is providing the blue color substance whereas tertiary alcohols do not provide any color substance so this is a best test to identify the alcohols now let us see other important tests also litmus test alcohols are neutral towards the litmus test so that they don't change either red litmus or blue litmus whatever it may be uh, to other color and next one is ceric ammonium nitrate test this uh, reaction we have discussed already it converts the primary alcohols to the aldehydes and benzylic group to the aldehyde ceric ammonium nitrate is an yellow color solution can it is an yellow color solution when it is added to the any oh group contained compound it converts to the red color so this uh, test only gives the idea of the presence of the oh group but it will not tell what type of the alcohol is present so to identify the type of the alcohol present we have to go with the victor mayer test now the last one is acylation test this acylation test is uh, important for us why because the same reaction we use in the biomolecules uh, structural elucidation of the glucose so this is rcocl is called the acyl chloride if r dash is replaced by the benzene it is called the benzoyl chloride so when you subject the alcohols with the acyl chloride or benzoyl chloride here the reaction is chlorine and this hydrogen will be eliminated as hydrochloric acid so liberation of the hydrochloric acid is the identification uh, for the presence of the oh group in a compound so these two reactions are useful for the identification of the presence of the oh groups but they don't give what type of the oh group means what type of the alcohol it is and after the loss of HCl, here whatever the molecule we are getting, this is the molecule that is called as an ester. Now let us see extension of this alcohol's topic that is to the ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol means uh, OH groups are both two OH groups are placed on the two carbon atoms that is adjacent carbon atoms. Such type of the compounds are called the glycols. But if two carbon atoms are present, it is called the ethylene glycol. Let us see how to prepare ethylene glycol because ethylene glycol itself is not in the syllabus but uh, it is generated usually from the our syllabus compounds for example alkene is there alkene is in our syllabus so in that direction we need to study this ethylene glycol okay so when how to prepare ethylene glycol 
there are four reagents which are very helpful for us to prepare this ethylene glycol from alkenes. So when this alkene CH double bond CH3 ethene molecule is subjected with the this is Bayer's reagent cold dilute alkaline KMnO4 or this is one of the important uh, reagent osmium tetroxide with the pyridine followed by Na2SO3 and it should be added with the H2O also. Okay, so this combination or else using RCO3H means this is uh, peroxy carboxylic acid. Use any peroxy carboxylic acid. So peroxy means like this or C double bond O O O H peroxy bond is there no so it is called peroxy carboxylic acid. So you can use the peroxy carboxylic acid or silver oxide or silver with oxygen means send the citrulline gas over the silver catalyst in the presence of the oxygen. So either peroxy carboxy acid, silver oxide or silver with oxygen. So all these combinations gives epoxide means double bond which shall be converted to the epoxide. And this epoxide when subject with the H plus and H2O means H2O we get the alcohol means here you can put the hydrogens here also. Ethylene glycol. Then what is the difference between these three uh, four reagents that shall be understood because all are giving the OH groups and the all are able to produce the OH groups on the adjacent carbon atoms but whether they follow the same stereochemistry or not that is very important in our um, competitive examination. Now here I will explain the important thing. See Bayer's reagent that is dilute KMnO4, dilute alkaline KMnO4 or osmium tetroxide pyridine Na2SO3 H2O. These two reagents will perform same reaction with the alkene molecule. Means they add OH groups from the same side. Same side they will add OH group. So this is called the syn hydroxylation. Okay. But if you use uh, next two reagent that is peroxy carboxylic acid silver oxide H plus H2O. See here H plus H2O is common step for both of these and first step also common step only reagents are different. So that if you take any alkene epoxide will be formed later H plus H2O is common. Okay, so when this combination of reagents any of these two reagents are used then OH groups will be placed on the opposite side to the molecule. So this is called the anti-hydroxylation. I am um, saying this is reaction is so important the reason is they will ask the uh, reaction based on the um, place of the OH groups present from the K KMnO4 or osmium tetroxide or peroxy carboxylic acid or silver oxide. Same molecule may not be answered but the reaction is so important to understand the properties. Now there is one more important reaction Prince reaction this is called as a Prince reaction that is a compound containing both OH and CH2OH groups can be obtained from alkenes by the addition with the formaldehyde in the presence of acid as a catalyst. So this reaction is known as the Prince reaction means if you take any alkene so in that alkene we can add OH group as well as CH2OH groups at a time that in the presence of acid catalyst with the formaldehyde combination and where to add this OH group where to add CH2OH group. The OH group is always added to the double bonded carbon with the least number of hydrogens that is that the carbon atom that is able to form this stable carbocation. Now let us take an example the reagent is this one formaldehyde acid catalyst in the presence of the water. So it breaks this bond so here carbocation secondary carbocation is more stable so OH group will be added here and CH, HCHO is you know, it becomes CH2OH. So CH2OH will be added to this carbon means we are getting one more carbon atom extra in this reaction. Now you can see uh, these are the primary carbon atoms actually these are the carbon atoms primary in the sense main carbon atoms but this CH2OH whatever we got this is from the formaldehyde. Okay so here OH group is added so we are adding OH group and CH2OH group to the alkene molecule. Now let us take the another molecule this is an alkene molecule. So here formaldehyde H plus and H2O if you add so again now you have to add OH group here CH2OH group to this CH2. So OH group CH2CH2OH and formaldehyde same acid and H2O. 
so OH group CH2 OH group like this so this reaction will be very helpful to you uh, how to because they match this question uh, they will give alkene like this and product like this what type of reagent they don't give the reagent then people get confused how because generally people are aware that OH group can be added here and here by a different reagent alkaline KMN for osmine hydroxide all these but people suddenly they don't get the idea how this CH2 is coming how to add extra carbon atom between these two carbon atoms so that uh, becomes a big doubt so for that Prince reaction is very helpful now industrial method how to prepare ethylene glycol with industrial method we know that HOCl HOCl how to get this one HOCl can be obtained from the Cl2 plus H2O combination that gives HOCl here OH minus Cl plus so OH minus one side Cl goes to the other side of the double bonded carbon atom we get this hydroxy chlorides and this hydroxy chloride this is very important reagent if you must remember that whenever sodium bicarbonate is added to an uh, halo alkane molecule only that halogen shall be replaced by the OH group you must remember sodium bicarbonate NaHCO3 you have to boil it so this chlorine also will be replaced by the OH group now let us see other reactions again the same reaction we will use in the coming discussion so here by reduction of glyoxal glyoxal means CHO CHO we know that lithium aluminum hydride reduces the aldehydes to the alcohol so CHO will be converted to the CH2OH and this CHO also shall be reduced to the CH2OH and from 1 comma 2 dibromoethane so two bromine atoms are there then these two bromine atoms are to be replaced by the two OH groups then what I have to do we have to do with the sodium carbonate with H2O so people get the doubt sir how sodium carbonate with H2O it is simple thing that sodium carbonate react with the H2O and forms sodium bicarbonate so if you want to use use only sodium bicarbonate NaHCO3 and boil it or else take sodium carbonate and H2O combination so this combination basically uh, do uh, replacement of these two halogen atoms with the OH groups so in this way we can uh, replace wherever halogen atoms are there with this uh, important reagent because this is a less known reagent to most of the people now let us see some of the chemical properties of this ethylene glycol one by one so ethylene glycol when subject is only one mole of the sodium sodium alcohol OH part always react with sodium and replaces the hydrogen so mono sodium ethylene glycol will be formed which react with one more sodium means two hydrogen shall be removed PCL5 PBR3 reactions are same here bromine we used here chlorine the reactions are if you use one mole of any of these phosphorus halide they remove only one hydro one OH group here chlorine here bromine if you use one more mole then other OH group also will be replaced see here we are getting this uh, 1 comma 2 dichloroethane here 1 comma 2 dibromo now why PI3 is so important in this particular process again you may get this ethylene glycol from these compounds how you can easily get with sodium bicarbonate treat these two molecules with two moles of sodium bicarbonate you will get the ethylene glycol and when PI3 is used this reaction is so important initially it will put two reactions like this so at the end we will get the uh, 1 comma 2 diiodoethane but when two iodine atoms are at the adjacent position the molecule is unstable so immediately I2 molecule will be eliminated and giving the alkene molecule now let us see uh, ethylene glycol when subject with the hydrochloric acid at low temperature only one OH group shall be replaced if you use the high temperature both the chlorines both the OH groups shall be replaced so this reaction you can use to get this molecule or else you can get you can use this molecule this reaction also many are there to replace OH group with the chlorine but if they ask this reagent then you must be aware of the temperature combination because if you want to replace both the OH groups with the chlorine you can use SOCl2 also 2 moles of SOCl2 where 2 OH groups are replaced by the 2 chlorine 
then what happens uh, ethylene glycol when subject with the carboxylic acid this we have discussed in the official esterification reaction that OH group reacts with the carboxylic acid and forms the ester so that H2O molecule shall be replaced so here ester is formed because we used only one mole if you use one more one more mole then this OH also react with the carboxylic acid giving the ester okay and apart from that this ethylene glycol even react with the uh, acetaldehyde or acetone how it reacts means I will write down the uh, reaction here just see CH2OH because this reaction is important in aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acid lesson. This aldehyde I'll write. Aldehyde means we can write the molecule like this CH, CH3, CH3, CHO. So water molecule shall be removed. Two hydrogens from the ethylene glycol and oxygen from the carbonyl compound. So now oxygen is left now. So this oxygen shall be connected to this carbon. This oxygen shall be connected to the carbon like this. This is called a cyclic acetone. So, if any uh, cyclic ether, this is cyclic ether is formed from the aldehyde, it is called the acetal. If the same molecule is formed from the ketone, it is called the ketone. So, in acetals, uh, the one of the ether ca carbon atom is having the hydrogen. In ketals, no hydrogen, only methyl groups are there, means alkyl groups. So, whether cyclic acetal or cyclic ketal, whatever it may be, this combination of reaction uh, products are called the dioxalones this dioxalones we shall discuss in the coming uh, lessons because this is reaction is useful for the protecting of the OH groups as well as the aldehyde groups aldehyde and keto groups similarly let us see how the ethylene glycol react with the acid combinations so when concentrated HNO3 is used H2SO4 we shall discuss again later so I will remove this one Okay, if you want to H2SO4, then here SO4, HSO4 will be formed. Okay, uh, so that uh, nitro uh, HNO3 means hydrogen from the HNO3 and OH from the uh, this one, uh, ethylene glycol, both will be removed as the water because acid react with the alcohol and removes uh, water molecule, dehydration happens. So that uh, uh, ONO2, ONO2 will be formed. And if ethylene glycol is heated to the high temperature like 500 degrees centigrade, this is important reaction. Uh, this shall be asked. Okay. Uh, so when heated to the high 500 degrees temperature, H2O molecule will be removed from within the molecule and epoxide shall be formed. When it is uh, treated with the dilute HNO3, you see the difference here. Concentrated HNO3 means nitro ethers are formed. When dilute HNO3 you are using, dilute HNO3 is oxidizing this primary alcohols to the COOH groups. So this reaction is useful to you in identification structural elucidation of the glucose. So there also we identify the presence of the primary alcohol using the dilute HNO3. When glucose is subjected to the dilute HNO3, uh, we get uh, uh, alcohol, primary alcohol, carboxylic acid. So, wherever CH2OH group is there, that CH2OH group shall be converted to the COH group by using the dilute HNO3. So, dilute HNO3 not only oxidizes the primary alcohol to the carboxylic acid, even aldehyde group also to the carboxylic acid. So, next, uh, this ethylene glycol when subject with the strongest oxidizing agent that is H plus K mono 4 or H plus K2 Cr2 O7, it breaks the bond. Both shall be converted to the formic acid. This we have discussed in the HIO4 reaction indirectly. So again, HIO4 reaction itself is here. So in HIO4 reaction, it breaks the bond CH2OH to CH2OH so that that shall be converted to the aldehyde. But if the same reaction is subject with the KMnO4, then this aldehyde again will be oxidized to the formic acid. Now, concentrated H2SO4 if you use. So when concentrated H2SO4 is used, the reaction uh, happens like this CH2 and CH2OH OH and here also you take the two CH ethylene glycol molecules like this remove the water molecule so oxygen is connected over here oxygen is connected over here okay this molecule shall be obtained means when concentrated H2SO4 is used 
there is a dehydration process from the two ethylene glycol molecules so that we get this type of the ether molecule and H3PO4 is used. So when H3PO4 is used, we are not getting the cyclic ether type of the molecules, but only one OH2 molecule shall be removed. See, this is CH2OH, CH2OH, and here also let us take this CH2OH, and here also let us take this CH2OH. So H2 molecule, so CH2OH, CH2 oxygen, CH2, CH2OH. So only one water molecule shall be removed when H3PO4 is used. But when constant H2SO4 is used, two H2O molecules will be removed. Now, the other two important reactions of this category are anhydrous ZNCl2 fuse. There is a loss of water molecule within the uh, ethylene glycol. I will write that reaction here. CH2OH, hydrogen, HOH. So, anhydrous ZNCl2 will remove the water molecule like this. So double bond will be formed between these two carbon atoms. So CH2 double bond CHOH. But OH group on the double bonded carbon atom is unstable. So it immediately undergoes the tautomerism so that we get the acetaldehyde molecule. So these reagents, you don't remember much of these products. First of all, reagent and then behavior you remember. So when copper is used, then we are getting the glyoxal and when glyoxal is subject to lithium aluminum hydride, again which product we are getting ethylene glycol. This reaction already we have studied just now. So these are the reactions. Hope you understand. You please make a chart in your notebook and then try to prepare. Thank you.